vielleicht da drin. Okay. Ja, I like pictures. I like pictures in my life. And while we were worshipping, I saw a picture. And it's on that front wall. We have the cross. And because of the cross, he brought the light of the world into us yeah. and gave us light. And because of that light, we can grow. And just looking at that front wall, because of what Christ did and the light he brings to us, we have life. Maybe it's why I'm a farmer. I enjoy my work. I enjoy being outside and I enjoy seeing what God has provided. And, you know, there's little interesting things with farming. I sort of notice from time to time. I mean, I've been doing it for 40 years and I should know all these things. But you get reminded occasionally and Saturday week back, I was shifting our yearlings, our one-year-olds, a bit like teenagers, you know, full of energy and life and do what they want. And I shifted them into a new paddock of grass and they tore around the paddock like a bunch of mad things. And then they came running back to the gate that I'd just closed. Now, it's a tape gate which has electricity on it. And I've got a handful in this group of 150 that like to get extra and they like to sneak through the fences and they're always in the next paddock while all the others only got what they're supposed to have. Well, I watched this group of 10 or 15 run up to the gate, looked at me and then walk slowly towards the gate and put their noses out got closer and closer to the electricity and started sniffing. Did you know cows can smell electricity? They were checking to see if I had turned it on. <laughs> and I was watching them and I thought, mm, maybe I should check too, but I can't smell electricity. So I have to grab it. And yes, it was on. <laughs> um, the yearlings were probably greatly amused because they knew. And then on Sunday last week, Catherine and I were sort of walking out the door, jumping in the car, and our electric fence unit is in our garage. And I heard it making its noise as it goes, it clicks every second. But it didn't quite sound right. And as I walked out to the back of the garage, I heard another crack from electricity hitting ground. And the main lead wire had disconnected. And I thought to myself, oh, well, it'll be fine until after church. Then I thought, maybe not. Remember yesterday? So I rushed back in, turned the unit off, jumped the fence in my good cinder gear, found the spanner, fixed up the wire, and then, in peace, came to church knowing that it was going to work. And so, you know, just still a little bit of agricultural stuff there. Um, I love my job. But remember those. I'm going to bring those back later. So James chapter 2, verse 14 to 26. You know, I'm really enjoying the book of James. This guy is straightforward. He's a straight shooter. He doesn't waste words. It's clear and easy to understand. So starting at verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does, does not have works. Can that faith save him? 
If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things that needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, your foolish, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that, sorry, you see that faith was active along with his works and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them on by another way. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, also faith apart from works is dead. See what I mean? Pretty straight, isn't it? There's some thought that James contradicts Paul. That what he says when Paul talks about we're justified by faith, James is contrary to him. But it's not so. James is writing to converted Jews initially. Ones who have been brought up under the law. Ones who have found peace and salvation and freedom through faith in Jesus Christ. But then they took it too far as we often do. I have faith, so that's all I need. Oops, everything's sliding. And so James is reminding them that the works they were used to was the works of the law. He's reminding them that because of your faith in Jesus Christ, there is the ongoing work in your life. And interesting too, he uses the word works, which is plural. It's not singular. He's not talking about your nine to five or eight to four. He's not talking about your paid employment. He is talking about your whole waking, working life. All you do is your works. Yes, and that does involve your nine to five. Your attitude at work. But also involves the attitude to one another and to those you meet on the street, to those that come to your door, to those that maybe you didn't want to have anything to do with. So just to confirm that James and Paul weren't on a different page, let's jump to Ephesians 2, 8, 9 and 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith. 
and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, and that's the law, lest anyone should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And then also Titus 3, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. You know, did Titus come up? That was a repeat of... (laughs) Here we go. If someone's got it on their Bible, if they could read it for me, if it's not coming up on the screen. Um, But, yeah, carry on. For by grace you are saved through faith, Mm. and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Mm. Yeah, I did get it right. (laughs) (laughs) A bit rattled. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, not by what we did, by grace, but God has got work for us to do. And so, going to jump back to verse 14 to 17. And on my notes, I've titled it Faith Without Action. You know, how often when someone sneezes around us, we just say, God bless you. And these verses take it a bit further and say, be warm, be fed, God bless you. And then we turn away. What good was our blessing on someone when we gave them nothing. What has it done for them in their time of need? When someone needs a listening ear and we don't listen, but just say, hey, we'll pray for you. What good is that? Do we sometimes fall into the excuse of I'll spend time in prayer for you, but we miss out on the action. Please understand prayer is important, but let's follow up with action. Don't let our prayer be a substitute for blessing others physically. Don't let our prayer be a substitute for not witnessing or not walking in our faith. For not going to work with a good attitude. For not giving 100% when we're being paid to give 100%. And he goes on to say, and you know, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. And I said to Catherine yesterday when I was going over this again, I said, I don't know whether I should say this or not, but I'm going to now. I have two cat types of cows on my farm, live ones and occasionally dead ones. Dead ones are useless. Absolutely useless. They're still cows. But they eat no grass and they make no milk. And that might be a bit blunt. But let's not be dead in our faith. 
Let's not, not harvest what needs to be harvested. And let's produce fruit or milk, to take my example from the farm. Let's be productive. Let's not be feet up in the air, but hands out. Walk in our faith. Yes, spend time in prayer. Spend time getting to know the Lord. You know, all our worship songs today were filled with action. What our Father had done for us, what Jesus did in obedience to the Father, and then what we have to do in surrendering and obeying him. It all takes action. Our worship was alive today because it was action. Action from the Father, action from the Holy Spirit and a willingness from us to worship our Lord. And I felt it. And it was good. Just a saying, works are not the cause of faith, but the effects and signs of the life of faith. Genuine faith affects behaviour. And in verse 18 and 19, James touches on the fact that just to say, I have faith or I believe, and how often do we hear it when we talk to someone? Oh yeah, I believe there's a God. Yeah. Our next comment should be, and so what are you going to do about it? Because yeah. it takes doing. Even the demons know and believe there is God. But their acknowledgement does nothing for them. Let's not fall into their trap. We need to believe and then take action. We need to read the book. Develop our faith, develop our walk with the Lord. And then as we develop, we automatically demonstrate our faith. And in verse 20 to 26, the example of Abraham, he took his son and he sacrificed him in faith. The angel stopped him and provided an animal for the sacrifice. But Abraham had followed through. He had taken action in faith. And it was considered to him as righteousness. Rahab, the prostitute, acted. She had heard of the God of Israel. She had seen the effects of Israel as they passed through other nations and the desert and heard the stories. And she wanted to serve the God of Israel. And so she took action. She stepped out in belief. And she was saved. In verse 26, the body without the spirit is dead. Faith apart from works is dead. 
and that story I said at the beginning with the heifers sniffing the fence. They knew if it was working. How many of the people that we come into contact with know that our faith is working? Can they sense it? Do they walk through that energy field of the kingdom of God? Do that feel the energy field field of the kingdom of God through us? Not by us, but by the grace of God. Because of the cross. Because of the life Jesus has given to us and the Holy Spirit in dwelling with us has that energy field of the kingdom. Can they sense it? Do they know? Because when they sense it and when they know, either two things will happen. One, they'll avoid you because they don't want to be shocked. Or two, they're going to ask why. What is it? And it'll give you an action. It'll give you an opportunity to share, to breathe life. To walk in life and affect those around us is the works that this chapter is talking about. And I find that straightforward and exciting. That because of Jesus' faith, his obedience to the Father, the grace that was given, his resurrection, the light he shone on me, I now have life and I can live it. So I just want to finish with Mark 12, 30 to 31. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. See how much action there is in there? Mm -hmm. This is the first commandment, and the second, like it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. That is our employment. That is our work we are called to do. And it is plural. Love the Lord your God with everything we have. And there's going to be enough left over because of the strength he gives us to love our neighbour. And that love is action. is action. It's an energy field that wraps around us that all can feel. Could we have the worship team back to do I Surrender again? (laughs) So again, God's word gives life. So live out that life Live the word, thus extending life to others. Good news needs to be experienced, a tangible expression of grace. While the song, while we sing this, if you need to take action and to surrender 
a part of your life that you haven't given up? Or all of your life for the first time to God? Please come forward and we'll pray with you. If you need to take action today to be filled with God's blessing for you, don't just have faith, take action. Take a step. God loves you.